the artist Mark Hall. I will let you do your own introduction, so you're probably well, thank better Thank you very much for having me tonight. I much appreciate being here and showing um, the world of felt making and actually felt art in different genres. Like, you can have felt art in a, a piece of, of a wall art or even a textile, you know what I mean, wearable art, stuff around the house that you can use, like this, for instance, as a little what I call a mug rug. It's a rug for your mug. So, yes, mug rug. That's that, right? Anyway, so I wanted to start out with actually telling you a little bit about the history of felt and felt making. So, felt is a type of textile that is not woven, that is produced by actually matting, condensing, and pressing fibers together, which I will show you later what's meant by that, okay? Uh, it can be made of natural or synthetic fibers, whichever you choose to do. Um, felt making is older than spinning and weaving, and many cultures have legends about how felt making was invented. Here is a funny one, actually. Uh, Sumerians claim that the secret of felt making was discovered by Umamun of Ladash, a traveler, and a Sumerian, a legendary warrior hero. So, the Christians have legend that felt is an invention of Saint Clement or Saint Christopher. They both were fleeing from prosecution and they packed their sandals with wool to prevent the blisters and <laughs> making shoe, the shoes more comfortable. And then at the end of their journey, the wool turned into fat. <laughs> that's the story on that, okay? So that's, and then felt socks actually, and from their, from their sweat, from moving and sweating, that's how they produce the felt from the wool they stuffed in their shoes. So, and the National Museum in Copenhagen has preserved uh, pieces of this. Um, a lot of these kind of um, felt making procedures or ideas or what came actually go back to 3,500 years ago. So it is the oldest uh, craft on the planet, pretty much. And the classical Greek authors mentioned the use of felt specialized workshops for making felt hats and felt gloves uh, were discovered in Pompeii. Nomadic people still practice felt making and make rugs, tents, and clothing put of felt for everyday use and for selling to tourists. One of them that come to mind is actually the Mongolians. And they have a really interesting way of doing it. You know, do you, do you guys know about yurts? You know what that is, a yurt? Anybody know? A tent? Yes. They are round, so, and they have felt, made the, the walls and the tops made out of felt. But thick, like that. So what they do, they produce their own felt. They do use horses, and the felt gets rolled in, like a carpet. It gets rolled like a big fat roll, with a rope on the side and they tie it up to the horse, and the horse starts galloping to the tundra, and it starts beating the fibers that are in this row on as they go, right? And that's how they make their felt, and that's what they use for their uh, you know, roofs and, and sides, and however, that's, that's the Mongolians. That's how they do, okay? So they do it still today. It's, you can watch videos, you can see that that's what they're doing. It's an interesting, um, you know, type of, um, I guess, entertainment. <laughs> That's practical at the same time. You know, if you can cruise in the tundra, you make your felt at the same time. Who wouldn't want to do that, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's that. Um, so there are many different techniques in felting. There's wet felting, needle felting, nuno felting, and the ones I'll be demonstrating tonight will be a needle felting and wet felting. So you can see what that does or how that works. And I have various pieces I brought with me that I will then tell you how they were done. So you can see from the demonstration that I do to the end product, what it can look like, okay? So um, 
The needle felting is a technique that, that we use, or that I do, that's made without water. Where wet felting, actually, the word of wet only says, yeah, well, wet felting is water and soap, right? Mostly olive oil soap, okay. Um, and, let's see. And the felt is made by interlocking the fibers by actually using these little instruments, like this. They're super sharp, they have barks, and you want to be super careful to not prick your finger on these. They're super, super sharp. So, with that said, the actual, this is an actual wool rolling piece that I would use. And I start pulling it apart like this, just a little bit. And then there's a piece of wool felt that I already made, okay? So I'm going to just show you how this then integrates from what I was talking about. Is this little tool, push it down, like so. I'm just going to make a random design. Okay. Start pushing it in here, like so. So you can pretty much make any kind of design you want to make in different colors, different shapes, different whatevers, whatever, you know, protein boat, basically. So anyway, so then it punches in through here. Now there is this little tool, there's another one that only has three, and then we have needles, and they're super sharp, and I have them go around, you can see them. Like these long ones here, in really small places. Use one needle. So you hold it here, there's no other thing, and it goes like that. Okay, but just, maybe if you want to do an edge, more of an edge design, or whatever you want to do, you know, and just start pushing through with these guys. And so they're super sharp. and. They have bars on them that helps you to integrate the, the actual wool, right, into your piece. Okay. Now, what does not what works is the actual fiber, like wool wool felt. Uh, if you take an acrylic or something like that, it will not work. The fibers will see here how they migrate in here, and here's the other side of it. Hmm. That's what it looks on the other side. If you'd like to see it, I can come around and you take a look and see how it goes. This is not quite done, but this is how it goes, kind of. What did you call this dry technique? What is it? This is needle felting. Mm -hmm. That's needle felting. It's really a fun thing to do. Um, yeah. On that note, needle felting, um, I'm going to pass this around. I did the whoops. Here. This is also the felt Make sense? I'm just showing you on the little piece what it does. This is a finished piece that I did. That's also the felt right? So if you want to um, where do you pass it around? Where do you get the wool? There are different there are different places you can buy them online uh, and there's also different many different um, quality of wool, right? So okay. you can answer your question. Um, there's one that I brought with me, it's called uh, Wool Buddy. Yeah, it comes in 24 colors. Okay. okay. That's Wool Buddy, and the Wool Buddy has all these different little, uh, semi little like packages of all these different colors. Where, now, where do they get theirs? Online. I buy this online. But I mean, they get them. Do they get it from sheep or? Yeah, yeah, from sheep, merino also, merino wool. But there's different grades of merino, right? This one, okay. you can feel this. I'm going to let you feel the difference. Feel this. It feels okay, right? Feel this. This is the stuff. If you can afford it, this is, this is the type of, like, 
um, wool that you want to buy. This is hand dyed, hand spun. It's very expensive. For a little piece like this, it's like 30, 40 bucks. So it's not cheap. This is way cheaper, but you can see the difference in the quality of the actual you know, material. So, so that's, does that answer? Well, and, and like, where do they get it? Did they get it from like Italy or US or mm -hmm. who knows? There yeah. are many people around here in the US that have their own llamas, their own sheep, their own goats, their own whatever. And uh, you can find the guys that produce that. I found them at the Weavers Guild in actually Webster Groves. And they were there selling them was when the, they have their own show every year in October. And so, but this so, is, so is this like, they just shear the sheep and then and they get you know, that? that I don't, they, no, they shear it, they cart it, they do a whole process. Oh, That's the whole oh, different yes. ball game. If you want to do your own, I am not way too much you want. This is already involved enough to go in to make your own, you can, but I think it's really, you'd have to find somebody that actually does that. That produces that wool. I mean, so I, I don't like alpaca. See, this comes Shaving, apart. Dying like, is that, that alpaca wool? wool? Yeah, I feel this is very soft. It's totally amazing That's because it has silk in it. It is very soft. And it's just really nice. Um, anyway, this is what that looks like, feels like. You guys okay with this? Um, I think there's at least one for a farm in Missouri okay. that raises so, alpacas. Oh, yeah. There's a farmer that goes to the Ferguson Farm Market. Yeah, I assume, I assume there are people who do this who can buy patterns they can follow, is that it? Or do they do it all creatively? Yeah, but there's patterns. There are you can, patterns you can do, but I, I am, I've been an artist all the time, sure, sure. and I am not a copier. So I will create my own designs. It's like a coloring book for some people. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's okay. You know what? Yeah. You can start out that way. Well, I am in a problem. I mean, you know, I just have ideas in my head cool. and then I sure. try to start in my head, right? So, so I would just not enter anything that you do like a like a bowling by number type of thing no, into an art show. It's, but for learning, that's a good way to for, learn. But, yeah, I agree. I, I but agree. just not entered into any kind of show. Right. So. I mean, you, um, the more you you work with it, it's it's not it's very labor intensive. I can tell you okay. that. Uh, I'm going to walk around here and pull something else. Um, so you have a design in time you try to you're starting and if you, you, if something comes out of your That's head, not, yeah, you it scratch, comes right out of my head. You scratch on a paper and then fall? No, you don't no, even use no, paper. I don't. So you see this piece here? This yeah. here? Uh -huh. This has, um, get these pieces up here. Just a second. Um, these, are, these are silk. This is actual silk fabric, mm -hmm. right? So I just brought like a few strips to go give you an idea of what this. I mean, it's kind of stringy, kind of like a little crazy. But here, when you look at this, you see this piece going across here? It's black and white. That is a, a strip of silk that I integrated into a felt background when I created this piece. This is all done, this is all new felt. When I was talking about the little punch around like that. This is all done in real fabric, and this is, you know, it's like, I'm gonna call it painting with fabric, painting with wool, but it's a, it's a different medium, so it has a whole different feel, and it's work with it. It's not messy, but paint, but I mean, paint's okay, it's awesome, I paint, you know, and I, I, I'm very much a fiber artist, that's my home, that's what I am, in. and uh, my mother, I'm from Germany originally, my mother made it, and crocheted and did things that were just absolutely phenomenal. And so I have a lot of her gifts <coughs> with me today. You know. And so I've kind of followed out the tradition on that one. So anyway, so these pieces are integrated here as well as um, like this kind of stuff. Huh? If you come close, you can see it. You come close later if you want to see. You can see how it is here. So I will take a piece and start pulling it out and start making a design wherever I want it and how I want it. But this is my own invention. This is nobody else's anywhere else in the book or nothing. That's my own invention. So, so I create my pieces, I create my fabric. On this one also, uh, I have what's called wet felt, which I'm going to show you in a minute. 
here this is wet felted, this is also wet felted, this is needle felted, and here are the pieces integrated from the background I created to create more of a drama in the actual piece. It makes sense what I'm saying? You're okay so far? You have any yeah. questions? Or you good? Everybody good? Okay, great. So that's that. Okay, so that's the um, that was on the new felting part. And I actually created this is kind of cool too, how that goes together. See? This is wool I felt it and I made these. So, Those are know, awesome. Right? Yeah. So and it goes with the head oh, <laughs> uh, I can get my hair, but I can get my head with my hair, but whatever. So all good. So that's that. Um, this is easier. I have, to inter I have to interject a little something here. Yeah. Anytime I go to a MOFA show, they're the most amazing clothes because you see all the fiber artists in their own creations, yeah. and it's amazing to see the, the wearable art. Go this way. Thank you. So, also, this is. Is there a difference between cheap wool and alpaca wool as far as doing this kind of stuff? Um, yeah, there is, but I'm not really totally sure. I always look for the finest, that the best I can afford. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the best one that, I don't know if alpaca is, I think it's more coarse, coarse, more than merino, I think. But don't quote me on that one, I'm not really sure. Yeah, she has a pet one the other day, and I was scared of it. So <laughs> I can't tell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, also, this was also done in felted right here, and then I read it into it beads to it to make that design. This is also um, how, how do the beads adhere to the cloth? Is it the same way? Do you see that's a little holder? Uh -huh. Yeah, I stitch into it with needle and thread. Mm -hmm. With needle and thread and so to create a little bit more of a, you yeah. know, uh -huh. a fun design. Um, that one Dribbling technique really good now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very, it's very, oh, it, it, it's very hard to do. I can tell you. By the time you're done, you do it like. You bounce your ball and stuff around in your hearts to the tundra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, we pop the ball to, to 
No, yes, you will deflate the ball. To, yes, you do. Well, but you have to tell me before you can do that. I mean, obviously. So, so there's that. And then uh, this mat was done the same way on the ball. This can turn inside out. No problem. It does not go and do anything or be go and put or nothing. It's just, you can mash them around, you can throw them in a suitcase, you can do whatever you want. And so that no is wrinkles. no wrinkles. So I just turned it inside out so it gives you a different look. If you wanted to do that. You see that? Like so? Cool. Yeah. And it's warm too. Yeah, it's very warm. You can feel that. It's very really warm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and also on this piece, I um, because you see the different pieces in here. This is all green on the inside, right? You see the different pieces in here. Again, these pieces are um, those kind of silk pieces. And I cut in small strips and then felted it into the hat. Hmm. Make sense? Yeah. You know yeah. here? So I felted that in here so to get the design. Right? And yeah. So that was that. Um, wow. the, um, the other felting that we were talking about is this kind of felting, which is called Nuno felting. It's very much used in the fashion industry for scarves and hats and gloves. Yeah. And um, as you can see here, there is a, see this piece here? That's a chiffon scarf. So you felt it into, I felt it into a scarf. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And that's Nuno felting is that. You can check it out. Now what I did here, I put glass beads on the end in between and I made these little things out of the wool, yeah, to have the fringe. And the other side goes looks this way. Yeah, yeah with some netting and things, and then this side has all of it. This thing. And you can pass it around if you want. So. And then in the meantime, I want to a second. I want to show this also. This is also no that this, is amazing. I love this that. This is also Nuno felting. And the noodle felting, that's one piece, right? This, you look at, you see all the different pieces. I just want to be able to show them, just to see, to figure out. See that? Mm -hmm. um, so, so will the pieces ever come apart? No. Say if you no. tie, tie a knot in this around your neck? No. Never? No, you can do whatever it was. This is all done. This is all totally done. To, so you can actually um, So you felt the different pieces together, right? I was going to huh? We felt the, 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 the you pieces lay, together and... You lay it out with pieces like this. This is another piece. This is a piece that you would use for this type of Nuno felt, right? Actually, this is a piece I did with um, leaves and grasses. I actually did that myself. I made this piece, yeah? So you could use this, and then what you would do, take, I'm gonna just show you. I know I'm all over the place. Uh, and when I go, see, if you had this piece, then you start layering this on top. You see what I'm saying? No, this gets wet felt. It this gets all wet and gets laid. This way, this way, that way, it gets a whole different series of how you lay it out on the table. Because you're going to make one long piece. Wow. But I used different pieces of fabric, silk, a gauze, or different designs. So then I made the felt design on top of it. Are you making sense? Yeah, so there is to be a base of a woven fabric? Yeah, mm, you actually make the fabric, so oh, yeah? to speak. Yeah, because you. Well, in Nuno felting, no, because you have these pieces to stabilize also, right? right. Nuno felting is a whole different fashion industry. Nuno. Nuno. It's a Japanese word, actually, and it means cloth. It's a Japanese word for cloth. So, 
and leave it up to them. Somebody invented it. You know. um, so anyway, that's that's that. What else do I have to say? Oh, oh right. here. These two guys, flowers here. These are made. Actually, I knitted them. That's another way of cutting. You can knit something. And then, you know when you have a sweater that's like all of a sudden if you have a washer, you go dump it in the washer, dryer, boom, it shrinks. Because it's all wool and you couldn't do that. So it made you felt. When wool shrinks, it makes felt. Wool is so nice and So okay. So right, so these flowers I made like that, I knitted them. They were huge like this when I started. And then I started throwing them in the dryer and go around to actually um, make the pedals and then I'll be going on the purse on the outside on the big bag. Like a carpet bag, tent bag. So that's what I'm doing there and this is also a needle felting, needle felting. This is a whole different animal right here. Alright. Should you draw the cute little things underneath your display? Yes I did. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> that's great. So anyway, this is another scarf, it's very soft, it's also made from all the wool fibers like this, you lay them out, and this is a huge long process to also do, so felting is a lot of fun, but it's very, very labor intensive. I guess. And uh, I'm going to show you in a minute, so anyway, that's another fun You should one. model it. <laughs> so then, you find a hole. Stick it to the hole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, that's what you can do. So, I find the world of fiber and felting exciting because there's so many things you can do with it. From creating a piece of wall art to creating a scarf or even this here. Check this out and you see that. Mm. Yes. Was that from a ball? Uh, no, this was knitted and then I felt it, I knitted and I felt it and then I made it. I made the purse. It even has feet on the bottom and just like a regular little purse. Flower idea is similar to that. So this is knitted first. You first knit and then you felt. Okay. Yeah. So you felt that by putting the wash machine? Yeah, and it's really tricky because if you over felt it and it shrinks too much, mm -hmm. guess what? <laughs> it's really a, oh god, a fine, a fine line. You have to check it every five minutes, make sure it's right and what's in your head and how you want to do it and, and all that. You so can't start over if you get it too slow. No, you can't. No, no, no. This is so funny. No, no, excuse me. You cannot unshrink it. No, you can't unshrink it. What's the shrug? It's like the little people that shrink. You know what I mean? Sorry, no, once it shrunk, it shrunk. So anyway, I just want to give you an idea of like what can be done, how it's done, and I'm going to show you now how to do it. Pass it around, it's really warm, it's super fun. And, and you can scrunch it around. You can really do this, it matters a lot. It does nothing. See, it comes right back up. It just, it just, do you know what I mean? It's super, it's very soft and very warm. And strong. And very, very strong, yeah, and very fun to wear. And you can really walk on it and make a statement if you want. See? All right, so now, <laughs> you guys had fun so far? Yes. Are you doing a good job? Yes. You're doing an awesome job. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, great. So here is, this was the needle felting. As I said, we do this here. Really short now. The next. Do you use a special board to do that? Oh, on sorry. Yes, I do. Um, this is called, what they call a wool bunny. Okay? This is a, this is also wool and felt. Because you need a base for this. Any piece you're working on, you need a, a, a base to be able to felt into. And I found that this is actually the best. Some people use 
phone, you know, from a chair, like this big old phone stuff. It, over time, that makes a dent like that, and it compresses together, and it really doesn't work as well. Whereas the wool body is really a great little, uh, I can leave the stick in here if you don't. Um, it's like, be okay so you can see what this is like, but be careful, it's super, super, super sharp. So, and this is the wool body, right? So this kind of makes it, so you can actually have a base to felt with. Make sense? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's how you do it. Just, you, you know, just like that. Did you make that? It takes a little bit of patience. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. A little bit. Did you make the, the Did you make the wool buddy? No, I didn't. I bought the wool. And you know what? I don't remember where I got it from, but look online. It's the same wool body Google it. Yeah. I don't want to share any information. I have no, 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 I'm going to get to the last section here, and that is, this is what's called wet felting. So, here I have my wool, as I said before, take it apart, like this, and actually it's super crucial that you make this very even and actually cross hatch it, by that I mean Pull it out, you put it here. And you pull out a little bit more. Okay. And then see how fine your whispers they are, they're super fine. Right? So you put it here. And you do a little bit more. So then I'm gonna go the other direction. I'm gonna go this direction this time. And then to show you what it will do, okay? Now usually when I work, I have a big table like this, you know, bench make a scarf or whatever, but uh, it's a little bit more practical to bring a little piece to show you. <laughs> so, now, what is the surface that you're doing that on top of? Is that uh, looks like some kind bamboo, of bamboo? Bamboo mat. And but there's various ways you can do it. You can use a pool noodle when you start rolling. You can. Did you say a pool a pool, pool, noodle. pool noodle? A pool noodle. Yeah. I can't I, even I, say I that. I just didn't use a pool pool noodle. Excuse me. Yes. So I have here. So let me say a layer of bubble wrap on the bottom in my tray. Uh -huh. I have a bamboo mat on the top. And then I have another bubble wrap, and then I have my folk, my well, my wool sitting on here. And I'm gonna do one more layer, one more layer. So what you want to do is alternate the layers. You don't want to always have them go in the same direction. Because if you do, then they don't they don't get the density. Makes sense sense? Yeah. Then you don't want you have to go vertical, horizontal, and sometimes even sideways, like that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, great. So now, I'll be done with that. Yeah. And then, I'm going to use water, of course. Spray water. To wet this down just a little bit. And it's like super soft and like, Or you know, you could maybe if you wanted to, you do a piece of 
pieces of this, right? So then in order for your design not to go um, off, you take a piece of tool, Penny, and put over it. Press it down like this. And then I'm going to use some soapy water right here. Just a little bit. Maybe fairly wet, but not so super wet. That's olive oil, so you go across it. Huh? Did you say olive oil? Olive oil, soap. soap? Yes, olive oil, soap. Is the type of soap matter? Yeah, olive oil soap is the one to use. Okay. Um, yes. So then, what you want to do is we want to make sure this kind of like starts to come together a little bit. Just by motion. And you'll see it in a minute, it will start a little bit. This is going to take time, so. So where do you get olive oil soap? Do you, you make it yourself it. or? No, no, you can buy it in Whole Foods or any of those places that have that stuff. So. so let's see what this is doing. See, see how it's, if I start to pull it up, oh. it comes yeah. off a little bit, but not like it was before. Right. It's already starting to come together, right? So you want to keep doing that a little bit more. As I say, when you make a big scarf for any bigger piece, it's super labor intensive. Because I'm going to tell you in a minute why. Once I start rolling, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Is that bubble wrap that's on? That is bubble wrap. Yes. Uh-huh. That's bubble wrap. So I'm going to make big pieces and you have huge pieces of bubble wrap. And by the time you, you roll it, uh, then you have, you can have big rolls, like, huge, you know. When, so. when she made this, this was like nine feet long, sort of about this wide. Uh -huh. That's where the pool so. noodle came. She See. had to roll it around the pool noodle. Yeah. Yeah. This time. You can't have a car. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a trick and a half, but anyway, um, so I am hoping that I can show you now. I'm going to come around so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit in the process. See how this is coming? If I do this, it's already starting to match together, but not enough. Make sense? See, I am so cool. Is that it's because great. of the olive oil soap? It's the soap and the agitation. You agitate the soap and, and water. And the cross hatching helps. And the cross, the cross hatching is so you get your felt even and you get it without holes. Uh -huh. Because you don't want holes in it because the holes are going to be there. If you don't do if you, It's very crucial to lay it out just so. Be meticulous in laying it out and lay the groundwork. That's what's going to determine the outcome. That's, I think it was anything, so I just sketch out a painting, right? You gotta sketch it out and go, yeah, it's gotta go here, and this color goes here, and then I do that, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, because if you don't, you, you don't know, right? Now, I may be a little bit more familiar, a little bit more crazy, because I was just start on a piece of fabric and I just start. But that's just how I operate, I always have. Anyways, so that's the well-paid and interesting design already. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. See what I mean? So it's coming together a little bit. So how long would you how long would you continue to agitate it? So soap and water that soap and water. How long? She's done it for hours. For like a piece that size, but she but like hours. This is just beginning. They have to tell it to show the whole thing. Then you then she'll go to the whole. You have to agitate and agitate a lot to make it dance. Really First you really have to get it yeah. so it doesn't move. Yeah. Otherwise, the design is just false apart. It's, it's like it's awesome. Yeah, you can, but you need to use. Yeah, you need to use. Many different kinds of items that I've ever 
Yeah. 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 Y